while I was a seminarian in Chicago, in the cathedral, this was when I was just starting out my preparations for the priesthood, I was giving communion in the communion line was a man, maybe in his 20s or 30s, and I couldn't believe it. He was talking on his cell phone. And he gets up to receive communion from me. And he says to the person on the other line, wait up, man, got to get communion. Extends his hand. I give him communion. I'm back and walks right out. That is the experience in many of our churches where we have lost respect for the sense of the sacred that takes place here. Much of that has to do because we live in a Protestant nation where we think that it's all the same. It doesn't matter whether you're Catholic or this or that. You know, everybody believes the same thing. You know, it's, it's all the same, you know. They get communion too. So do we. So, you know, it's like, you know. We are Catholic. We believe that Jesus is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. That Holy Communion is Jesus himself. And we are Catholics because we are Jews. We are baptized Jews. Everything we do here is just Judaism baptized because Jesus was Jewish. So the rituals, everything we do, is all from our elder brothers in the faith, Jews, who celebrated the Passover, which was the memory of God sparing the people of Israel through the blood of the Lamb. Notice, before we receive Holy Communion, I say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, which is all of us. And then we receive that Lamb in His blood, and that blood, in like manner, marks us. You know that those whose doors of their house were marked with the blood of the Lamb, they were spared death. The angel of death could not touch them. Which house is marked each time we come to Mass? Notice we say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under where? Under where? Under my roof. That's into my house. Because God comes to my house to spare me. But I can only get that if I have a sense of the sacred, if I haven't lost it. Which is why it's so very important for us to remind ourselves of that. How special Holy Mass is. We call it holy. It's not just, you know, anything that we do here. 
God comes down to nourish us with his presence. And why do we have to do it all the time? Because we have such a short memory. You know, we, we all suffer from spiritual Alzheimer's. We forget that God is with us. And if God is with us, everything's going to be okay because no one can be against us, that we have been marked with the blood of the Lamb. That we have been spared. Jesus has died for us. His blood has been shed for us. And continually, that blood, which wasn't just spared and spilled on the cross 2,000 years ago, but that blood continues to be spilled at each and every altar when Mass is celebrated to nourish us each and every one of us, because we are such hungry people due to our problems, our issues, all that we experience, our fears, our wants, our longings, all that happens on a daily basis in our life, that God so loves us, God so loves you, that he continues to come and nourish you. You know, the Jewish people would never eat anything that contained blood in it. That's why it was so horrific. And the Jews couldn't accept Jesus because he said, I'm giving you my flesh. And my blood to drink. And if you read what did they, the Bible, what did the people say? How could this man give us his flesh and his blood to drink? It was unheard of. Because blood contained life. Blood had life in it. So when we ingest the blood, we are ingesting God's life into us. So it's no longer, the Bible says, I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's no longer me, but it's Jesus. That's why the Bible says we are the body of Christ. You want to see the body of Christ? Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Mm. Yeah, I am the body of Christ, the beautiful body of Christ. You want to see the body of Christ? Look at your husband. Look at your wife. <laughs> Look at your kids. Look at all those around you. We are individually and together, collectively, the body of Christ. We come to receive what we hope to become. And we ingest that blood into us, which is the life into us. Why? Because we are such needy, and sick people. What makes us sick? Sin makes us sick. Our worries make us sick. Our problems make us sick. The world makes us sick. The virus makes us sick. You know, all the stuff around, you know, it makes you sick. Your bills make you sick, don't they? You all have got issues, you know? Mm. I just talked with a young lady yesterday she had her, her, and I found out something new. Uh, she had been going out with her boyfriend for close to two years, and then all of a sudden, 
she got ghosted. Do you know what ghosting is? I'm, it's a new term. I, I'm, I'm, I, all of a sudden, I'm like feeling so old <laughs> when young people tell me things. Ghosting is when somebody just drops you and they no longer have any communication with you. Can you imagine going out with somebody for two years and then all of a sudden they like stop all communication with you? She going through hell, okay? People have really hard lives. Everybody here has things in their own life. I could go down the list. When the Good Samaritan, all of you read the Bible, of course I know you do. I just know you do. When the Good Samaritan finds the man who was assaulted by the robbers, Remember, he was left for dead. What does the Good Samaritan do to the man who has all these wounds? He pours oil and wine on the wounds. Because in ancient times, wine was medicine. Where are your wounds? Where are your wounds? They're inside of you, aren't they? You've been betrayed. That divorce has left you. Real bad, hasn't it? You know, the death of your loved one, the grief. There's a lot of pain, isn't there? Being ghosted after two years of a relationship. Your kids not talking to you, not paying attention to you. Hmm? Your car breaks down. You don't have the money to fix it. There ain't no buses in Clear Lake to take you around many places. It's not a, this is not Chicago. Mm. Can't pay your bills. Gas prices are almost at $5 here in California. Huh? the inflation. Yeah, there's so much going on, isn't there? You get a diagnosis. A lady that just came to see me, she's here today. She went through cancer five years ago. Everything was going absolutely wonderful. She went for her six-month checkup. They found a mass. She's waiting for the biopsy results. Huh? Things happen, don't they? We all know what that's like. We haven't had rain at all. And we're all wondering, aren't we, what is this summer going to look like here? Are we going to get more fires? Hmm? Every year it seems like we have that. Things eating away at us. You just look at someone like Margarita, you know, her son 20 years old killed in a, an accident you don't expect that do you then your restaurant burns down uh, i 
I bring her up because you all know her story. Hmm? And then we come to Mass. And God comes down from heaven. Huh? And takes his real presence into a little piece of bread, flesh, and a little bit of wine, and says, Take it and eat it. It's me. Take and drink. Because you've got a lot of stuff in there. Let me ingest my life into you. I want to come to you. Into all that's going on. into all that is suffocating you, into all that you were going through. Take me in. Let me pour my wine into you to let you know I'm with you. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Huh? It's all going to be fine. That's Holy Mass. God giving His life to us. To fill us with hope. To let us know how loved we are. You are so loved that God didn't just die once for you but continues to sacrifice himself for you at each and every Mass. Do you get how special Holy Mass is? You don't. That's the issue. That's why we can answer a cell phone here. That's why we can leave early Mm. That's why you're like, eh, he's going on. Because mm. you don't know where you're at. That's why you can think about the breakfast. Heaven and earth meet here. God comes here. For you, because you are so special. Huh? Are you understanding this? Get it. I spent so many years, 12 years to be exact, in the seminary filling myself with wonderful information to tell you all. <clears throat> now you get why I talk so much because it's been, it was 12 years, so, you know. But all the seminary classes didn't explain to me the Eucharist, Holy Mass, like one experience. When I received a phone call to go and baptize a four-month-old baby dying from cancer.
and I go to the hospital and I look through the hospital window in the door and the mother is there feeding the baby with her breast, breastfeeding her baby that I'm about to baptize because the baby is dying from cancer. And I walk into the room and she's breastfeeding the baby and she's singing to the baby. This is my body given for you. This is my blood given for you. She's singing a church hymn to her dying four-month-old baby. And she looks at me and she says, Father Adam, the doctors have all told me that I should stop breastfeeding my baby. But I am his mother. And he is my child. And as long as I have him here with me, I will continue to breastfeed him. The doctors have told me that I should stop singing to him, that we should just wait, give him more morphine, and wait for him to die. But as long as I have him here with me, I will continue to breastfeed him and sing to him because I am his mother and he is my child. I will continue to hold him, breastfeed him, and sing to him because I am his mother and he is my child. All the classes in the seminary did not teach me what that one experience in that hospital room taught me about what Mass is. Because God here in like manner, who is our father and mother, takes out his breast and says, Come to me, you who have whatever cancer is eating away at you, eating you, killing you slowly, come and feed. Feast at my breast. Come to me, all you who find life burdensome and weary, and I will give you rest. Come to me. God takes his breast out and says, Come, you. And God holds us in his hands. We are the body of Christ. The priest is the presence of Christ at Mass. I take the bread and I turn the bread into Christ's body. But you are the body of Christ. But before I turn the bread into the body of Christ, I break it. And then I say, this is my body given for you. We are the body of Christ. Broken. Now you understand? Through all your cancers. But before I break it, I do what? I bless it. And then I say, this is my body. How can you be broken and yet blessed with all your cancers? How? 
Where is? Mm, where is the bread at Mass? Where is it broken? Where is it? Where is it? In the hands. The priest in the person of Christ takes it in his hands. Jesus took it in his hands and then he said, this is my body broken for you. I may be broken, but I am blessed. Why? Because I am in his hands. And he's continually breastfeeding me, singing to me, and holding me. He's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole wide world in his hands